Hey, what's going on guys? Arix here. Welcome back to another video for Monster Hunter World Iceborne. And today, I'm going to be answering a community question and putting together a handy guide on all the optional quests you should be doing. This question came from the crazy player in our Discord, which, by the way, if you guys haven't joined, you definitely should. So many different channels there, but if you guys want to chat Monster Hunter, you want to ask me questions, you want to get involved with other people, and you kind of want to find people to play with, it's a good place to be. But the crazy player said, So, I know Monster Hunter World is kind of coming to an end, but since new people are still buying it, could you put together a summary of all the optional quests people should do as they play through? Because I know that I missed some stuff mostly just doing the main story, and it would be nice to know what quests unlock stuff versus what quests are just for mastery. And I did actually touch on this back when Iceborne first launched, doing some of the kind of initial ones you should be doing. But since things have expanded since then, since there has been some more stuff added, I figured I'd put together a comprehensive guide of all the optional quests you should be doing. Keep in mind, this is optional quests, which are of course available all the time. This is separate to event quests. Those videos I always do as a separate video. So with that being said, I split this into three main chunks, mantle related stuff, layered armor stuff, and just miscellaneous stuff for the farm, basically. So if you guys do enjoy this, then like we super appreciate it. Any questions, drop them down below. But let's get started. So on the mantle front, starting off with Master Rank 1. If you want to upgrade the Gilly Mantle, you will of course need to do the quest Ice Catch, which is a Master Rank 1 quest. It's worth noting the Gilly Mantle is of course unlocked organically, so provided you have played through World, you will just have it. Following off from there, also in Master Rank 1, you have the quest This Here's Big Horn Country. This will give you the upgrade to the Vitality Mantle, and that is also a mantle you will get through Natural Progression. When you get to Zora Magdaros in the base campaign, you are given this mantle. Moving over to Master Rank 2, you have the quest Poison and Paralysis Pinch, which is for the upgrade to the Cleanser Booster. And if you haven't got the Cleanser Booster, then you unlock that via the 4-star quest. We're going back to low and high rank on Nightmare's Wings. Moving on from there, you then have the quest Feisty Girl Talk, also a Master Rank 2 quest. This is for the Health Booster upgrade, which is also given to you organically as you play throughout the game, so Health Booster you will have. Meanwhile, the quest Put That Red Cup Away is for the Waterproof Mantle upgrade, and if you haven't got the Waterproof Mantle in the first place, you need to go back to the Delivery Request, and you need to go and do the quest Armory R&D Waterproofing, complete this Delivery Request, and you get the Waterproof Mantle. Jumping over from there to Master Rank 3, the quest Red and Black Aces will give you the Glider Mantle upgrade, which is also a mantle that you get given organically, because the first time you get to the Coral Highlands and they talk to you about the Air Blasters, basically you get given this. So that's one to complete that upgrade. The quest Running, Rolling, Weeping is the one for the upgrade to the Challenger Mantle, and if you haven't got the Challenger Mantle, you need to go back to the 7 star high rank quest, the Red and Blue Crew. Completing that will give you the Mantle, completing the aforementioned quest will give you the upgrade. The quest Festival of Explosions is for the Fireproof Mantle upgrade, and if you haven't got the Fireproof Mantle, you need to go back to the 7 star quest and do a Fiery Convergence. You get this quest by simply hunting a Dodogamma, an Oragon and a Lavasioth separately in the Elder's Recess. Once you complete that quest, you get the Mantle, and you can then upgrade it. The quest of Proud White Knight, which is of course another Master Rank 3 quest, will give you the upgrade to the Evasion Mantle. If you haven't done that, you need to go back and do the 9 star High Rank quest, a New World Sky, New World Flower, and you unlock that by hunting 5 unique Threat Level 2 Tempered Monsters, which are basically kind of the mid-tier ones, Anjanath, Rathalos, that kind of thing. A Nasty Flesh Wound is the quest you need to do to upgrade the Bandit Mantle, and if you haven't got that, you then need to go back and do the 5 star high rank quest redefining the Power Couple. Moving on to Master Rank 4 quests, the quest Diet of Rhyme will give you the Ice Proof Mantle upgrade, which if you haven't unlocked, you need to go back and do the R&D Weatherizing Delivery request. Complete that one, you get given the Mantle, you can then upgrade it. For the upgrade to the Thunderproof Mantle, you need to do Trap the Thunderjaw, which again is Master Rank 4, and if you haven't done this one, it's a little bit more involved. In order to get the Thunderproof Mantle, you have to do the 5-star quest Gone in a Flash against the Kirin, and in order to unlock that quest, you have to first complete the 2-star Snatch the Snatcher quest, the 3-star Landing the Landslide Wyvern, the 4-star White Monster for a White Coat, and the 5-star A Man's Best Friend. That will then unlock Gone in a Flash, which gives you the Mantle, so you can then go and upgrade it. The quest Piercing Black is for the Rocksteady Mantle upgrade, and if you haven't got that one, if you haven't got the Rocksteady Mantle, then in order to do that, you have to do the 9-star quest A Summons From Below, which is unlocked typically by hunting 3-5 to five Tempered Elder Dragons. Master Rank 5 quest now. The quest It's the Afterlife For Me is the one for the Immunity Mantle upgrade, and in order to unlock the Immunity Mantle, you have to go back to High Rank and do the 8-star quest A Blaze In The Sand, which you get by fully researching 15 monsters. 
The Quest of Tyrant's Banquet is for the Apothecary Mantle upgrade, and in order to initially unlock the Apothecary Mantle, you have to do the 8-star quest, A Portent of Disaster, which you get for fully researching just 10 monsters. So those two kind of go hand in hand. For Master Rank 6, the quest Hymn of Moon and Sun, which by the way is only unlocked when you are Master Rank 125 or above, is for the upgrade to the Impact Mantle, and in order to get the Impact Mantle, you first need to do the quest Showdown, the Muck and the Maul, that's a 9-star quest back in high rank, and in order to unlock that quest, you have to have hunted 5 unique threat level 1 tempered monsters, so the basic boys, basically hook okay, that kind of stuff. The quest Divine Surge is the one to upgrade the Temporal Mantle, which is only available when you are Master Rank 150 and above. And in order to get the Temporal Mantle, if you haven't done it, then don't forget you need to go back and do first the Blazing Sun quest, followed by Pandora's Arena, followed by No Remorse, No Surrender. Completing those ones gives you the Mantle, so you can then upgrade it. And then finally, for the Affinity Booster upgrade, you need to do the quest The Storm Brings the Unexpected, which is only unlocked when you are Master Rank 175 and above. And in order to get the Affinity Booster, assuming you are missing it, you have to first go back and do the 6-star quest, A Tingling Taste in High Rank, followed by the Delivery Request, A Master's Toast, followed by the 6-star quest, Stuck in Their Ways, then followed by the Delivery Request, Fire Spewing Brew, and you can then do the 7 star quest, a sore sight, followed by a rumble in the wastes, and that will then give you the booster. Pretty uh, involved, but it is of course important if you haven't got it. It is worth noting, of course, if you do happen to get to Master Rank 200, you do get the quest Master Hunter of the New World. There's nothing really noteworthy unlocked by this, so this is more so for bragging rights, but I figured I'd throw this one in here anyway. Also, don't forget, there is of course the Dragonproof Mantle, which if you want to upgrade, you have another delivery request called the Technician's Temperament, and if you haven't unlocked the Dragonproof Mantle in the first place, which you probably would have done if you fought Devil Joe, but assuming you haven't, then the 7-star quest Old World Monster in New World, followed by the 7-star quest the Food Chain Dominator, will give you the Dragonproof mantle. So if there's anything on that list that you haven't unlocked, they are the steps you need to take. Of course, moving on from there, there are a couple of things relating to layered armor sets. Keep in mind, a lot of the layered armor sets are tied to DLC quests, so this is of course just optional quests, but ones that you may have missed, there is the optional quest Treasure in the Steam to unlock the Thermae layered armor, which is basically the Hot Springs armor. So if you haven't done that, go and deliver a couple of those stones, much in the kind of traditional egg quest fashion, and you can get this. If you want to unlock the Dragon King Eye Patch layered armor, you need to have hunted a Savage Devil Joe. Meanwhile, if you want the Strategist Spectacles, you need to have mined in Master Rank Quests. Pretty standard. Most of these you should already have, but in the event that there is something missing from your collection, then hopefully this helps. Of course, on the arena front, if you want the Pulverizing Feather, you need to have got one Odegaran coin, one Glavinus coin, and one Naga Kuga coin. So of course, do the relevant quest for that one. Meanwhile, for the Crystal Earring, you need to have hunted one Tigrex, one Danoga, and got one Hero King coin. Finally, it is worth noting, while this is actually a DLC quest, so it's kind of not necessarily related, I did want to mention it because a few people have been asking in my recent video what armor I have been wearing, and if you complete the Distant Dark Tide quest, which of course is Arc Tempered Namiel, then you can get the layered Black Belt armor, the Guardian armor, and the Artian armor, and the Guardian armor is basically what I've been wearing. It's kind of like the Defender armor that you get, but of course it's just layered, and I think it looks pretty cool. So that one is a slight outlier. It's worth noting that currently they have kicked off another one of the seasonal events, so event quests are back again, so if there's anything you missed, then it'll be a good chance to jump in. Finally, on the miscellaneous front, this one is pretty self-explanatory. Pretty sure most of you should have this covered by now, but again, if there is any gaps in your collection, then quick farm upgrades. The four-star quest, way back in low rank, Persistent Pests unlocks your second slot in your farm. The seven-star quest, Talons of Iron Ice, unlocks the third slot in the farm. And then when you jump into Master Rank, the Master Rank 1 quest, Greetings from the Tundra, is new items. The second one, Master Rank 2, Looking for that Glimmer, upgrades your capacity. And the third one, Master Rank 3, Secret of the Ooze, unlocks the fourth slot. So with all that done, you should then have all the mantles, have them upgraded, have the necessary layered armor, and have your farm upgraded, which should be pretty much everything for your collection. So hopefully, the crazy player, that has answered your question. If there's anything I've missed, then uh, I apologize, but I'm pretty sure I've got everything. So hope you guys find that helpful. Hope this ticked off some boxes for you. And of course, if there is anything you guys want me to cover, you have any questions yourself, by all means, jump in the Discord, post some questions. It may make itself into a video. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed that video. Don't forget, if you haven't already done so, you can join the Arax Gaming Discord. We've got an awesome community over there with so many different channels for you to chat loads of different topics and different games. I'm in there, the team's in there. If you guys want to chat with us, find people to play with, it's just in general a great place to be. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to turn on those notifications so you don't miss any of our future uploads.